Welcome to Team Help Desk for Outlook. In this demonstration, we will explore on how to make a managing real installation, configuration, and deployment of Team Help Desk to an Exchange public folder or shared mailbox through Outlook. To install the managing real tool, let us shut down Outlook and then run the setup executable file, which I have downloaded from the product website earlier. Note that requirements of Outlook and .NET Framework. Here, I can select which one of these languages is to be used for the Team Help Desk folders, forms, and views in Outlook. For this demonstration, I will continue with the English forms and views. I will use the default installation folder, which is under the Program Files folder. Now we are done with the files extraction and installation. Let us start Outlook. Now I have a choice between creating a new Team Help Desk folders in Exchange, or to use an existing Team Help Desk folders that were configured earlier. As I don't have an earlier configuration, I will choose the first option. This would allow me to copy a Team Help Desk folder in an Exchange Public folder or a Shared Mailbox folder. For this demonstration, I will place the Team Help Desk folder under the Public folders. But you can, of course, place it on a Shared Mailbox folder too. Now, the final step is to choose a Team Help Desk database where all the settings, templates, and other Help Desk settings data will be stored. Supported database options are Microsoft Exchange, Microsoft Access, and SQL Server. If Microsoft Exchange is selected, the settings data will be stored under the Team Help Desk settings subfolder in Exchange. This option removes the dependency of an external database and works on wide area network, VPN, and HTTP connections. If you choose access, the database will need to be stored on a shared network folder. And all technicians working on the support cases in Outlook would need to have access to this network folder. For SQL Server, the server name is mandatory. The database name is optional. If it is left empty, a new database with the name Team Help Desk Settings DB would be created. For this demonstration, I will use the Microsoft Exchange database option. But you can, of course, use a dedicated database if you wish. For more detailed guidances and best practices, on using a Microsoft Access and SQL Server database, refer to the PDF help documentation. Now that we have finished installation and chosen a database as a help desk manager, I would need to configure the permission level of each team help desk subfolder. By default, the permission on each subfolder for all users is set to author. Only the manager who had performed the installation has got owner permission. Without a proper permission structure defined, technicians accessing the Team Help Desk folders would not be able to perform most of the Help Desk tasks like creating new support cases and working on their assigned cases. Hence, the manager needs to grant permission to each subfolder for all members of the Help Desk team. The following table summarizes what permission levels are required on each folder. Instead of granting permission for each technician, we recommend to create a users group consisting of all technicians of the help desk. And then use this group to assign permission as a whole in single step for each team help desk subfolder. Here, I have already created a group called service desk comprising of all help desk users.
and I can grant editor permission to this group easily over the ongoing cases folder. Likewise, grant the appropriate permission over the remaining team help desk subfolders based on the table shown here. In Outlook 2010, you would find the Team Help Desk Manager menu in the backstage view. This serves as the gateway for launching most of the functionalities and administrative tools available in Team Help Desk for Outlook. Here, you can customize the contents of various drop down fields, modify email templates, enable automation, and other advanced features. To get started, and for a quick evaluation of Team Help Desk, I will generate demo settings data and support cases samples. Let us look at the technicians list. Team Help Desk System needs to maintain the detail of the technicians that would be working on support cases. The technician name and email address are mandatory fields and should be unique for each technician. If there has to be calls to technicians from within Team Help Desk, say, from the Outlook form, the phone and mobile needs to be filled up. By specifying the mobile number of the technician, Team Help Desk can send SMS alerts to their mobile devices. Most likely, you might already have contact details of the technicians in the Exchange Global Address list. You can use this Import button to display the address book and choose those contacts that you want to import. The technician's name, email, telephone, mobile fields would be then automatically filled in the grid. In this column, you can selectively grant which technicians should have administrative access to certain resources and tools. The password field is used to authenticate technicians when they are logged into the technician's web access interface on a browser. Please note that this password is different than the one used in the Active Directory account. Now, let us try out the callers list. Team Help Desk can maintain the detail of the callers that had requested or will request for support. The caller's email address is a mandatory and should be unique for each caller in this list. If there has to be phone calls to callers from within Team Help Desk, the telephone and mobile number need to be filled up. The mobile number is also necessary if callers have to receive SMS notifications in their mobile device. Each caller can be assigned to a department or category in this column. And using the hourly rate of the assigned department, Team Help Desk can then use it as one of the possible rate for calculating cost and supporting and resolving the problem. The caller's list can also take a default technician for each caller. This is useful if you want to dynamically assign this default technician to a support case generated from an email sent by a particular caller. The setup automatically triggers the notifications to the concerned technician in the form of email and SMS. In this last column, you can specify a password that will be used by the caller to log on to the caller web access site from a web browser. Alternatively, this password can be generated automatically when Team Help Desk adds a new caller. This password is also available for insertion to the email and SMS notifications that will be sent out to the caller.
If you already have contact details of the callers in the Exchange Global Address List or in any Outlook address book, you can use this Import button to extract the contacts detail, which would be then automatically filled in this grid. Let us now explore the problems list. This list is a multi-tiered arrangement of categories and types. Each category can have a list of types. The first step in compiling a problems list is to gather the problem areas that your support staffs will be attending to. The problem areas are then feed into this category field. You can also specify the default hourly rate for each problem category so that, when using statistics, you can consider this category rate for calculating cost besides the technician's hourly rate and caller department's rate. The second step is to define the problem types for each problem category. For example, I can add a new type, Office 2010, and I will select Applications as the category. The default time is the duration in minutes that is assumed will be required to resolve the particular problem. If a technician does not enter any time spent and marks a case as completed or resolved, Team Help Desk will automatically assign this default time on the basis of the problem type of the case. Each problem type can also be associated with a technician from this drop down. The idea is to allow the help desk manager to assign the relevant technician to a support case on the basis of the problem area. Let us take an example with this support case item in the ongoing cases subfolder. Here, supposing the manager choose this support case to belongs to applications problem category and office 2010 problem type. Doing so, the default technician and default SLA check options would be enabled. And the manager can check it to assign the technician associated with this problem to this case. Likewise, the manager can also set the SLA associated with the problem to this case. This way, the manager don't have to look up the technician's list or consult with each technician in trying to figure out who is the best fit for resolving the problem. This is the problem status list. As technicians start working on assigned cases, over time, they may need to update the state of the problem so that managers can track and plan additional resources if needed to resolve that particular case. Finally, this check option allows Team Help Desk to automatically add non-existent problem category and type in the problems list. This happens when technicians specify their own custom value for the problem drop-down fields instead of choosing one from the list in the support request form in Outlook. Now, let us take a quick look at the assets list. In an organization, an asset can be a network workstation, a printer, keyboard, or any IT resource which needs maintenance and support over a period of time. Due to this, the help desk is a vital part of the company to get the most out of its IT assets. Team Help Desk supports maintaining an assets list, which is basically a metadata bank comprising of certain information on a particular asset, such as brand, OS, model number, barcode, etc. For this demonstration, I have defined an asset list comprising of computer nodes, printers, and photocopiers, which are used in the organization. Depending on the type of assets and use, I can customize the titles of these asset fields. As you can see, this list takes to drop down fields, the values of which can be compiled here. I have designated the second field as type of asset, the third as the operating system, and the fourth as IP address, which is a static value, and the last field, which stores the make of the asset. 
So, with this information available in the help desk, technician can use it to associate a support request submitted from end users. This makes it easier to track and pinpoint the source of the problem. Another advantage is, technician can look up for past history on that particular asset and easily seek patterns to the problem and learn how earlier issues were fixed. Now, to custom fields. Team Help Desk supports up to four custom fields in the support case form in Outlook. You can use these fields to feed additional information on the caller, case, or on the problem itself. The first three fields are static text fields and can't store anything, whereas the fourth field takes a drop-down list from which a value can be selected. The titles of these fields can be edited to get the proper meaningful label that signifies the information the field store. Optionally, the fields can be made mandatory so that without filled, the support request case cannot be closed. If a field is marked mandatory, it would appear red in color when viewed in the Outlook form. Now, Team Help Desk is ready to generate support cases in Outlook. and technicians can start working on their assigned support cases. So, we have learned, with Team Help Desk Manager tool, administrator can easily and quickly set up a help desk system in a public folder or shared mailbox in Outlook for the entire support staffs of the help desk. But we have only explored a fraction of the administrative settings in this demonstration. For a more thorough detail, Please refer to the help manual. You can also look out for other video demonstrations that discuss about minute detail on advanced settings and automation in Team Help Desk. This concludes this video tutorial on configuring administrative settings in Team Help Desk for Outlook.